there, soulmates. We are back and we have plenty to discuss on this Cyber Monday, November 28th. Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report. Got to start by thanking our West Coast crew, Mimi, my Soro Demi, and Romeo for holding it down last week as we were on a Thanksgiving hiatus. Right. I am Courtney Hicks. And I'm the Cordelai Corte. We are honored mm -hmm. to stand behind this desk each day to take you on a journey across black America and share stories about the issues that impact our people. Yeah, we bring you our news, our views, and of course, our voice. And topping today's news, Mexican authorities are demanding an American woman be extradited after filing charges against her for the death of 25-year-old Shanquilla Robinson. That's the North Carolina a woman who died while vacationing in Cabo. Now, the case is being treated as a potential homicide. There have been discrepancies between police reports made after Robinson was found dead. Now, according to investigators, Robinson's friends, you know the story, told authorities she died of alcohol poisoning, but an autopsy report shows she had a broken neck and trauma to her spinal cord. We will definitely continue to follow this story. Meanwhile, the city of Atlanta has agreed to pay the estate of Richard Brooks $1 million. It follows a lawsuit by Brooks's widow, Tamika Miller, in the 2020 officer-involved shooting back in 2020. Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed outside of Wendy's while officers tried to arrest him, sparking nationwide protests. Now, earlier this year, attorneys say the case should have gone to a grand jury. Here's the very latest. This was a wrongful death lawsuit that was filed against the city of Atlanta. It is now being settled, uh, but the city not admitting guilt. June 2020, a deadly encounter outside of Wendy's restaurant. Rayshard Brooks failed two sobriety tests and fought two Atlanta police officers as they tried to arrest him for DUI. Prosecutors say Brooks posed an immediate threat when he then took and wielded one of the men's tasers. That's when he was shot and killed. It's our finding, or it's my finding in this case, that Officer Rolf acted in accordance with Georgia law. Prosecutors clearing the policemen of the charges because they say the facts show they did not act with criminal intent. Now word the city of Atlanta has agreed to pay the estate of Rayshard Brooks $1 million. The vote is 14 yeas, zero nays. The payout follows a lawsuit by Brooks's widow, Tamika Miller. A statement from her lawyers reading in part, quote, this grieving family has been through so much during this process. Although the children of Mr. Brooks have lost their father, settling the case will undoubtedly assist them with future plans as they come of age. The family disappointed prosecutors didn't pursue a criminal case. Attorneys earlier this year told Fox 5 it should have gone to a grand jury. All we're asking is that the community resolves these situations when it's a close call. And even with this lawsuit uh, in the rearview mirror now, there are still some financial dealings the city of Atlanta has to deal with. As far as this case is concerned, the two officers involved have also filed suit against the city, along with the former chief of police and former mayor saying that their constitutional rights were violated when they were fired. That's the latest here outside Atlanta City Hall. I'm Caitlin Pratt for Good Day Atlanta. Brooks' death left behind his young family, his widow Tamika Miller, their three daughters, and one stepson who were ages 1, 2, 8, and 13 years old, respectively, at the time of their father's death. And to Mississippi now, where a white father and son will now appear in front of a judge following their indictment by a grand jury. Ten months after a black FedEx driver says the pair chased and shot at him after dropping off a package near Jackson. Now, Gregory and Brandon Case were indicted on multiple charges, including attempted murder in connection with the attack on DeMontiero, DeMontiero Gibson, who was wearing a FedEx uniform when he dropped off, dropped off that package, but was in in a marked Hertz van that FedEx rented. Now, bond for both was set at $500,000 for each man for the upgraded charges, and they both bonded out last week. They have not yet been arraigned, and a trial date has not yet been set. There are new reports today from the FBI that confirms data pushing it back against the popular portrayal of black men as criminal perpetrators instead of victims. Findings show that black men are more likely to be victimized in other groups. The nearly 10,000 black homicide victims last year prominently downplays the increase. In many major U.S. cities such as Los Angeles and Atlanta, the increase has been almost exclusively among victims of color since the start of the pandemic. 
Now, the report also found that black victims remain underrepresented in U.S. news broadcasts, and as a consequence, they're rarely recognized socially as crime victims. You know, we've been on break for the past week, and of course, we did our best to enjoy the holiday, and yeah. we were chatting prior to um, going to air. We always have our morning chat. Yeah. And you know, some of these stories were just very difficult, uh, and, and because I'm such an empath, I, I really feel uh, for, for people in situations, it made it just a little bit challenging to enjoy Thanksgiving with some of these stories moving into the actual holiday. And speaking of victimization, uh, that situation in Buffalo, uh, that man who has been charged with uh, shooting and killing those beautiful souls at their grocery store uh, has now pled guilty uh, to murder charges, also to terrorist charges. So these are the type of stories that have stayed in the headlines and sometimes you know, depending on how you feel about them, can kind of challenge you to, you know, stay upbeat and, and happy. I know you had an occurrence uh, on, on your vacation as well. Yeah, I mean, similar to you, just, you know, could not get away from mm -hmm. uh, the headlines and the news. And while I was uh, on vacation in Norfolk, Virginia, yeah. visiting family, uh, couldn't help but stop by mm -hmm. the site of the Walmart uh, mass shooting uh, in Chesapeake, Virginia, where I walked the perimeter of it and visited the, the makeshift memorial and had wow. a chance to speak to some uh, survivors mm -hmm. uh, of uh, other mass shootings in the area, even, even as recently as eight months ago. And, um, you know, it, it, this, is, this, this problem is not going away. Mm -hmm. There have been over 600 mass shootings across the United States just this year alone, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of those folks that are involved, a lot of those victims, That's you know, right. are black folks. And so I know sometimes when we're reporting here on, mm -hmm. on the Black Report, some people wonder, well, you know, why so many stories about, you know, uh, this incident or it's this murder or, th or this, this act of violence? Well, part of it is because a lot of people don't even think of black folks mm -hmm. as victims of this violence. And so we want to make sure we do our part to balance out the portrayal of black people right here on Foxville's Black Report. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to move on to something much lighter. A history-making appointment to Michigan's highest court. A black woman will now serve on the Michigan Supreme Court for the first time in the state's history. Governor Gretchen Whitmore has appointed 34-year-old Kyra Harris Bolden to replace retiring Chief Justice uh, Bridget McCormick Bolden a Detroit uh, native, received her law license back in 2014 and became a state representative. Uh, in 2019, she will take her seat on the Michigan Supreme Court in January when her house term expires. Congratulations to that sister. Congratulations indeed. Now from a history-making appointment in Michigan to more history in the making, where early voting across the state of Georgia for the Senate runoff is underway between Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican char challenger Herschel Walker. 23 counties across the state got a head start this past weekend with tens of thousands of voters casting their ballots. Long lines wrapped around several early voting locations in Cobb, DeKalb, Fulton, and Gwinnett counties. Now, some of those voting sites reported wait times of up to, get this, three hours. Wow. While Democrats have been guaranteed control of the Senate, they have an opportunity to expand their majority after sweeping victories in the November 8th election. We will keep a close watch on that. All right, now to a story that uh, has captured the attention of lots of soulmates uh, like you across social media. A 19-year-old is asking for help after a judge denied her request to attend her father's execution by the state of Missouri. Corey Ramey made the request to see her father, Kevin Johnson, in enough time to be approved. Johnson, who is 37, is scheduled to be executed tomorrow. Here's the catch, though. Ramey's request was denied because the judge says she does not meet Missouri's age requirement of 21 to witness an execution. Now, Ramey hasn't seen her father since she was two. Johnson was 19 years old when he was convicted. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, uh, now to uh, Houston, Texas, where if you or someone you love lives in the city of Houston, a boil water advisory is in effect. Most schools in the affected area are closed, but for those that are open, bottled water is being brought in. The city of Belair has also issued its own boil water notice. The city advises boiling water for three minutes before drinking it, cooking with it, or brushing your teeth. The problem started Sunday morning with a power outage at the 
East Water Purification Plant that led to a drop in water pressure below standards. Now, the city tweeted out that the Public Works Department will begin collecting water samples today after getting approval from the state. Mayor Turner of Houston says the boil water notice won't be lifted until tonight or early tomorrow. All right, so the ancestors are rejoicing, but uh, here on Earth it is a bit of a sad news as Cecilia Sissy Marshall, the wife of late Supreme Court justice and civil rights icon Thurgood Marshall, has died. Marshall had worked for the NAACP in the 1940s and 50s. Thurgood Marshall, the first black justice in the court's history, retired back in 1991 and then passed away in 1993. Cecilia Marshall, Marshall, who lived in Falls Church, Virginia, served over the years on the board of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and the Supreme Court Historical Society. She was 94. And, you know, we, we, we continue to, you know, move into a time where we are losing uh, some of our greats, losing uh, that generation. And, and we want them to, of course, uh, live forever. However, we know our time here on Earth is, is uh, limited. But what I love is the legacy yeah. and the history that uh, they created the legacy that they built that we can continue mm -hmm. to celebrate and really live in. Yeah, yeah, and, and the legacy of Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall mm -hmm. um, was kept alive for so long, you know, because of his beloved wife. That's and right. so our condolences uh, for the family, mm -hmm. uh, but thank you for sharing yes. not just your, your father, but your mother with our nation. Mm -hmm. um, what, what an incredible life. Incredible. Yeah, uh, and speaking of things that are incredible. Uh, we've, let's go back to Houston for a second. Okay, let's do it. We've talked so much about, you know, the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, mm -hmm. the water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi, the water crisis in Baltimore, right? Uh, these stories keep popping up in the news, mm. and at some point we've got to reconcile, how did we just pass a historic piece of legislation funding infrastructure in our country mm -hmm. where at least our water infrastructure seems to be crumbling before our very eyes and mm -hmm. and we see too many you know cities that are majority black that mm -hmm. seem to be um, on you know the, the the front end of mm -hmm. you know these really uh, terrible cases mm -hmm. of of water management you know uh, water pipes that that uh, are too old uh, and, you know, this is really a serious problem. It's how many cities are we going to report on yeah. where there's yet another water crisis? A basic necessity. And it reminds me back to when you would see the videos of all the challenges of, like, third world countries and fresh water and how they have to walk miles just to pump water from a well or or, or bathe in, in, in water that's shared with the animals. You know, it's not too far from that in regards to just the basic need of, of water and, and for us to really not take that for granted and to do what we, uh, you know, elect these officials to do, which is to represent us, represent us and make sure uh, that we have the best quality of life possible. So yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on Houston. We sure will. Uh, still ahead, a lawsuit for $5 million, all because of semantics. Mm, we'll tell you which company is being sued for all of that, what you call it, cheese? Did you write this? <laughs> Coming up, you're watching Fox Souls Black Report. We call it guap, baby. <laughs> Queso? <laughs>